Hey guys, welcome to BP, the Bible Perspective. My reaction to, is tribulation God's wrath? Now, before we get into it, please like and share this video and subscribe to BP, the Bible Perspective. And as always, if you have a thought or comment, add it to the comment section below. All comments are welcome. I want to react to a video that was um, put out a couple of years ago by this pastor. I think his name is Pastor Matt, and he pastors Great Rock Church. And I believe he's in Toronto, Canada, or somewhere in Canada. But he, but in this video, and it's a short video, uh, which I'm going to, I'm saying it's going to be like a prelude to uh, me doing other videos on the question of, is the tribulation period God's wrath? Okay. Now, that is becomes important to how people then attach or address the rapture of the church. Now, I don't know exactly what his position is. Uh, I hold to a pre-tribulation position, but there are those who uh, that would go through, um, they believe they, that, that the church is going to go halfway through the tribulation period, and then there are those who will go completely through. In other words, they will not be raptured until the end of the tribulation period. It sounds like he holds to that position, but I'm not sure. But in this video, he kind of tackles the issue or the question of whether or not the tribulation period is the uh, wrath. Now, that's an issue, as I said, I want to deal with in, in, in upcoming videos. Uh, in terms of, you know, if you're saying that the tribulation period is, is not God's wrath, then my question is, then what is the tribulation period? Well, let's hear what he has to say. Let me share my screen. Now, as I do, I'm pulling this straight from YouTube video. And the reason why I do that is because uh, I will be having videos side by side here. I mean, scripture. I'll be able to go through the scriptures side by side. So that's why I have his, his videos on. So let's hear what he has to say. Hi, it's Pastor Matt from Great Rock Church. I, I teach things on the last days all the time. Um, a lot of futuristic things in regards to what's going to happen on the planet. I believe the Bible is one third prophetic and we should teach these things. And one question I get a lot is... In regards to tribulation and wrath um, and the question goes like this is the tribulation the wrath of God is the tribulation the wrath of God or will the last part of the tribulation period be the wrath of God or will that last seven-year period of tribulation be the wrath of God and I say no absolutely not believe okay so if you say, I'm going to go back and I want to cut them off here. Uh, okay. If you, so he's saying that it is, that, that the tribulation period is not the wrath of God. So now here's my question. Then what is the tribulation period? Okay. Now, I believe he's going to conflate something here, but I'll let him speak for himself. And then I will address it when he speaks to it. But here we go. Believers are always promised tribulation. Paul says in the Revelation, in Revelation 1, your fellow companion in tribulation. The book of Acts say, says what? Through much tribulation, we must enter the kingdom. That all, all believers are going to have some kind of tribulation. Okay? Jesus sa said, in the world you will have tribulation. So, we need to understand this. Tribulation is from unbelievers and the enemy, the devil, and in the last days, Antichrist. Okay? Jesus is just telling us in Matthew 24 that right before the end, there will be greater tribulation. Tribulation will be great. Right? So, why would it be greater? And, and what is the cause of the tribulation what is the what what 
what is the uh, what is the cause um what is the cause who's causing it now i believe he's going to address some of it here we go for the end it'll be great tribulation for believers but jesus says all the way back in the first century just like john said you'll always have tribulation paul john said he was in tribulation paul talks about tribulation in your life okay but jesus is just telling us that the tribulation for believers will be intensified in the last days period but in no way shape or form is tribulation wrath tribulation is from the devil from unbelievers and antichrist wrath is from jesus christ and anybody who loves jesus will never get god's wrath and so let me ask this then um if you say this okay that the tribulation right comes from man the antichrist or the devil okay so if you say that right again i'm going to ask the question what is the purpose of this seven year in other words it is true that the christian church has suffered uh tribulation period okay since its inception and i'm going to say every gener generation somewhere around the world has suffered tribulation or persecution okay or suffering but that's different than the seven year period remember we're talking about a dedicated period of time and in this dedicated period of time there are things that specifically happen uh that 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 is labeled to specifically happen okay now so now we come to a to me what's called we can, we can get into semantics a title or just like for example when we say the day of the lord when well, the day of the lord how long does the day of the Lord happen? In other words, we, are, we already know that the day of the Lord is not a 24-hour cycle. So right here, we go to the next step. It is a period of time. So the question is, uh, when does this period of time take place? What is the parameters of the day of the Lord? Does it take place or does it even kind of span during the seven-year period, period of time? All right, so I'm finished. Anybody who calls Jesus Lord will never receive the wrath of God or any wrath of God for all of eternity from this time till the end of time. But tribulation is from Antichrist. Wrath is from Jesus Christ. The church gets tribulation from Antichrist. Unbelievers get wrath from Jesus Christ. Good question. All right, now let me do this. I want to answer that question in several ways here. So let me do this. Uh, I want to I want to talk about. Let's see, I'm just going to show you quickly Revelation six. All right, Revelation six. Okay, <clears throat> so Revelation six. Um, and this is what I want to kind of show you quickly this is going to be quick now watch this so um uh what am I, okay verse 8 says and he took the scroll from the four living creatures and the 24 elders go down 24 elders go down before the lamb right now the he here is referring to Jesus. Then in chapter six, in chapter six, sorry about that, says, now watch this. So this is the question. Then I saw the lamb open one of the seven seals. Okay. Now, I'm not going to go through all of that right here, but I just want you to see something. This is in the book of Revelation. If we go back to chapter three uh and 
where are you at? Uh, Philadelphia. I want to read a statement from here. This is, there were seven churches that Jesus um, sent letters to, had John write and then send letters to. And Philadelphia was one of them, okay? Now, I'm, going to, I'm not going to get into, well, I'll say this. There are those who believe that these seven churches are uh, church ages. There's nowhere does, does John communicate this here. Um, but I want you to notice something that he says to the, the church in Philadelphia. Um, verse 10, he says, Because you have kept my command to endure, I will also keep you from the hour of testing that is going to come over the whole world to test those who live on the earth. Now, if I want you to see here now, because this is to me prophetic. And the reason why I can say it's prophetic because notice who is he talking if he if if it's only constrained to the church of Philadelphia during that time. In other words, during John's time. Okay. Then we can go back, we can look back on history right now, and we can ask the question. So what was the church of Philadelphia kept from a worldwide tribulation period? Now notice he says right here, to test those who live on the earth, okay? Now, we don't have to go further than this because there's, there's not a lot of explanation. So, but I, I, what I want you to see is the language. <clears throat> that the whatever this is, he says it's going to test those who live on the earth. In other words, this testing is going to come over the whole world to test those that live on the earth. Now, when we go back to chapter 6, he says, Then I saw the Lamb open the seven seals. Now, then we see that there are seven seal judgments. And Jesus is the one who was opening the seals. So watch this. So we see different things that are happening in the seven seal. And then when we get to the sixth seal, okay, or the seventh seal, I want you to see something. This is the sixth seal. And, and, and watch what happens. Here's what they say. Verse 16 says, and they said to the mountain, to the rock, fall on us, hide us from the face of the one seated on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb, because the great day of their wrath has come and who is able to stand. Now, we, we hear that, and then we go on to other judgments. So we get to chapter 8, look at verse 2, and he says, Then I saw the seventh angel who stand in the presence of God, seven trumpets were given to them. Okay? I'm going to go back. I'm, I should, I mean, let's start with verse 1 again. And when he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven. So here's my point. that I, and this, I just want to make this point in response uh, to our dear brother. One, he's, so here you have, during this period of time, Right. In, in other words, here is the period of time that the book of Revelation talks about. In, 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 in Matthew 24, and let, let me read it. Matthew 24, and I have to quickly go back. Oh, let me do it this way because I don't want time to go. Let's see here. Matthew 24. Uh, Matthew 24, and this is Jesus talking, and I just want to, now, I want you to see something. Look at the verse 9 here. He says, and then they will hand you over for persecution. They will kill you and be hated by all nations because of my name. Then many will take offense 
betray one another and hate one another, right? And then he said, many false prophets will rise and deceive many because lawlessness will multiply. The love of many will grow cold, but the one who endures to the end will be delivered. And this good news of the kingdom will be proclaimed in all the world as a testimony to all nations. And he said, and then the end will come. Then he goes on to say in verse 15, so when you see the abomination, then it causes desolation. Spoken of by, the, by Daniel, by the prophet Daniel, standing in the holy place, let the reader understand. Then let those in Judea, then, then, then those in Judea must flee to the mountains. A man on the housetop must not come down to get things out of his house. And the man on the field must not go back to get his clothes. Woe to pregnant women and nursing mothers in those days. Pray <coughs> that your case, excuse me, may not be in the winter or on the Sabbath. For at that time, there will be great tribulation, the kind that has not taken place from the beginning of the world until now, nor, nor, uh, nor, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, let me read that again. Verse 21, for at that time, so this is, again, notice, at that time, there would be great tribulation. So this is not the same back here as the persecution, but this is a very specific period of time. At that time, there would be great tribulation, the kind that has not taken place from the beginning of the world until now and never will again. And unless those days were limited, no one will survive but those days will be limited, excuse me, because of the elect. So, again, I just wanted to kind of point this out then. And then we go back to Revelation and just say, okay, well, if, and, and to me, what the brother is doing is conflating two things together. The time of the church and then, of course, the suffering. And, and like I often tell people, <laughs> you don't have to wait to the tribulation to suffer. For example, all you Christians that just kind of dying to get into the tribulation period, all you have to do is just go in different places of the world. Iran, Dubai, China, North Korea, and you would get plenty of suffering for your Christian faith. Here's my point. If the period of time known as the seven-year tribulation period, isn't God's wrath. As we show, he's point, you see, uh, from chapters, Revelations chapter 6 to 19, you see a series of judgments that God is pouring out on the earth. So you see seven seals, seven trumpets, and seven bowls. That's God pouring these things out on the world. So if you say that we're not a part of the wrath, and I do agree that the children of God, the church, is not a part of the wrath. But the other question is then, well, then who is a part of the wrath? I mean, uh, or who are those saints doing the tribulation period? Well, they're just that. They are people who are coming to faith during that period of time, and they do suffer greatly. But as far as the church and the rapture, and make no mistake, the seven-year period of time is the time in which God pours out his wrath upon the ungodly, okay? And it culminates with Jesus coming back, destroying the man of sin, and then taking over the world. So is the tribulation God's wrath? I would say it most certainly is meaning the seven-year tribulation period. And that's not to be confused with what we as believers right now face. And every one of us could face tribulation or persecution for our faith. But that's not to be confused with the seven-year, the period of time in which God judges the earth, as we saw in the book of Revelation that those seal judgments, trumpet judgments, and bold judgments are all judgments that God is unleashing on the earth during the reign of the Antichrist. 
Alright guys, that's my perspective. Don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe to BP the Bible Perspective. And as always, if you have a thought or comment, add it to the comment section below. I love the dialogue and will dialogue as long as I can. Alright guys, I'll see you in the next video.